For today's quiz, I have this large copper pipe and it's standing vertically, being held by these uh, lavatory poles. I have a piece of aluminum here and I'm simply gonna drop it down this copper pipe. I simply wanna know what's gonna end up happening to this pipe. It took me a long time to get this perfectly aligned in both axes, so I don't feel like taking that back off. I'll use another phone here and just show you that it's uh, a hollow pipe. So I'll put this on camera and video and I'll talk and I'll record. So if I hit the record button, you can see straight down the pipe and then I'll take it to the bottom and I'll simply point it up. Hopefully that's picking that up. quiz for today simply asks what happens when I drop this piece of aluminum through that copper pipe. Here's what it looks like today. I'll hold that up for you right now. As always, mark your answer and list your confidence. Typical student responses include, well, if it's a piece of aluminum, it's just going to fall straight down and it's going to fall rather quickly. And that's really the only answer that we get. But a lot of our students have been through these quizzes and they're like, there's got to be more to it. There's got to be more to it, but they can't think of anything. And therefore they all say, of course, it's just going to fall at 9.8 meters per second squared. So really, that's the only answer we get. All right, we're ready to drop the aluminum, and I just have a box here so I don't have to chase it around. It's got a piece of paper in here. You'll also be able to hear it. Hopefully the camera will pick this up. So one of the things I like to tell my students is, whenever you're gonna drop something, always wind it up. When you wind it up, it ensures that it drops faster. So let me go up and drop this. Three, two, one, and it drops. Now, if I don't wind it up, let me show you what happens here. So I'm not going to wind it up this time, and I'm just going to drop it. Three, two, one. And my students often don't believe it, but it really does take a lot longer when you drop it without winding it. Still hasn't come out yet. Crazy. I'll do it one more time. There it is. Now let me go ahead and do it with the winding motion. Wind this thing up. Wind, wind, wind. And put it back in. And it drops rather quickly. Interesting. All right, so now my students are angry with me. They're, they think that I've lied to them, and clearly I have. I do have a piece of aluminum here, but when it would drop in, I would reach into the box and grab this magnet, and it's a very strong magnet. And so now they're gonna say, well, you tricked us, and of course the magnet is gonna end up going slower in uh, you know, a piece of metal because copper is magnetic. And I'll say, well, you busted me. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done that. It betrayed your trust. But then I'll go over and I'll take the magnet and I'll say, you know, magnets are not attracted to copper. So why, when I drop this copper, I'm sorry, drop this magnet down the copper, does it take so long? Three, two, one. And it's gonna take a long time. Why in the world is that happening? Well, what's even more fascinating that ever comes out is what it looks like when it goes down. Let me see if I can position a camera and show this. All right, this is a top view. I'm gonna drop the magnet down and then I'll put the camera as a tracer. All right, let's see if we can explain this. Look, this magnet right here has a north and a south, and I've got field lines that are coming out and going back into the other side. When I drop this magnet down, it's gonna end up inducing a current in that copper wire. Look, anytime I break those field lines, I'm inducing current. And in that copper pipe, it's really easy to get current to go around. And as we already found out, 
when you have current going in a wire or a loop or a coil, it can make its own magnetic field. Now, the magnetic field that that generates opposes this magnetic field, and therefore they're gonna fight each other. So as this is dropping down from the potential energy of gravity, I'm inducing current, which is making its own magnetic field, which is slowing this down. And because we have current going around in that copper, which is not a perfect conductor, it generates some heat. So in the end, what's happening is I'm heating up that pipe a little bit as it's making a magnetic field. Look, my students aren't angry because they got to see this, really excited about this, and now they want to know all about Lenz's Law and electromagnetic induction, which we'll get into in future quizzes. All right, that's your quiz for today. Thank you for watching another Idealized Science Institute video. We are a nonprofit organization. If you like what you've seen, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you want, leave a comment below. It's helpful to us. If you can financially support us, go to our website and hit the donate button. If you can't, simply by sharing these videos with other teachers and students in your life will be helpful. While at our website, you'll find that we have our Idealized Science Institute book, That'll help you engage your students in dialogic discourse. There you'll also find we have a podcast where we break down educational research. We also have long form lessons. If you're a teacher, you can watch these and go in the very next day and enact these. Along with this, we also have many other resources, including more quick quizzes. So thank you for watching and we hope to see you in the next one.